Hey guys, welcome back. As you can see behind me, I've got a good chunk of this sawmill shed done. Or at least it feels like a good chunk done. Last day was a really big job. Got the big beam up there. Got the rafters on and just about ready to start strapping. You guys can see the strapping there left over from sawmill shack number one, Hillbilly Hideout version one. And so I'm going to put that back up sort of as a bit of a nostalgic touch. What I'm hoping is that this goes pretty smoothly today. I made a little jig that I'm going to show you guys and maybe I'll show you in just a moment. But this jig is basically going to sit on each subsequent row. So if you can look there, I got my first row there of strapping. This jig I'm going to show you sits on that row so I can kneel up there and then do the next row. And then I move it up and do the next row, etc, etc. This is pretty difficult to reach, especially with this pitch especially when you get you know above halfway so this little jig i'm about to show you really does uh does wonders for that but that's what i'm up against today i've got the strapping i don't know if i have enough of it i'm hoping i do but it's looking doubtful now that it, i look at it more closely but we'll see we're going to put it up there throw the steel roofing back up and hopefully we'll be undercover before long got the suspenders nice and tight today going to try to put a good day of work in so I think I can get it licked, we'll see. Anyways, I appreciate all you guys being here and let's get down to work. And just so you guys know, I'm leaving them long because I find I do less cutting if I cut them all at the end, as opposed to having to cut in the middle somewhere on a joist. You'll see what I mean later. I think the old logs on the old uh, 
sawmill shack they're probably pretty rotten if woodpeckers are coming around looking for a meal anyways let's get back to it all right guys well i'm just getting ready to go up on the roof to put the strapping on to be honest it's safer for me to be up there if i'm tied off than well at least in my opinion on a ladder as you guys can tell i got the uh I got the harness on underneath my coat here. I like to have it nice and close to my body in case I do fall. What you just saw was I threw the rope over the top of the ridge and that's what I'll be tied off to. What you'll also see me using is this contraption. I basically rigged it together and don't take this as the safest uh, option. I wouldn't encourage you to use this unless you've built one of these before. This is more or less just a platform that's gonna sit on the roof. It's the same, uh, same pitch as the roof. It's just got some little pieces to grab on to the previous row of the uh of the strapping and hold me up there you guys can imagine as you'll see in a minute it will more or less sit on the roof like this and give me a platform just to kneel on so that's the plan we'll see how this goes got a few more rows of strapping and then we got to do some steel work because rain is yonder and i don't want to get any more wet than i already am so let's get to it I'm sitting up here taking a bit of a break. I'm not going to lie, I am sweating pretty heavy up here, and it's not because it's warm out. I do get a bit nervous at heights, so maybe some of you guys are the same. I got this little safety rope here, and I start to second guess what the quality of that safety rope is and what the quality of this project is I'm sitting on. So anyways, let's just assume that it's built perfectly and it's built for my weight, and we'll finish off the strapping job. Yeah, let's get back to it. I'm just about to drive this nail into the end of this board here, into the uh, rafter. And if I just drive this home, I'm probably going to split the board. I think I've showed you guys this before, but I'm going to share it again. I, uh, I just flatten out the end of the nail. You guys see that? Just enough, flatten her out. And uh, in my experience, it prevents it from splitting. Now, it doesn't work all the time, I'm not going to lie. But I would say probably 95% of the time, it prevents it from splitting. Uh, I didn't invent that, I didn't make it up, but I'm going to pass it on to you. So if it helps you, all the better. I tell you, if you don't have a hammer with a magnet in it, you're, uh, you're missing out. As you guys can see, I put the nail in there and then I don't have to reach way over there precariously. I can set it and as they say, forget it. Well, I'm not really forgetting it, I'm using the hammer again, but you guys get the point. So I didn't want to get up there and try to, you know, mangle up some sort of a cut based on the line I drew. So I just took the overall width of this thing and I just ran this right up against the rafter and then whatever distance that was, I figured, hey, I can cut it consistently. So I'll just cut it all the way along. So you look up there, they're all the same overhang. I don't know what quite what it is. I don't know, three inches or so, whatever the width of that is. But at least I didn't have to, you know, draw a line and try to line up the machine with it. All right, guys, we're at a point in the game here where we have all the strapping up on the main part of the roof, and we'll just get a good look-see. 
you guys can see it there that's a beautiful thing i have to basically take a piece of wood and extend the rafters off the end off this side because my rafters weren't long enough the material i had wasn't long enough and so we'll extend it about a foot that'll give me some overhang for the snow and the rain to get away from the building and then we got to go back to the planning stages because i got to figure out what the front overhang is going to look like and if you guys have a look i put a piece of wood up there you see it there that's about five feet long i put it on an angle that i think will sort of complement the angle on the other part of the roof the back side and it'll also keep out the snow and the rain if it starts driving you know on a bit of an angle or something. holy smokes anyways i think that's what we're going to deal with about a five foot piece i'm just walking around and having a look at it from different angles to see if it meets that imaginary vision i have in my mind as to what this place is going to look like what do you guys think well looks looks pretty good i think i think we might end up going with that you guys get a good side view there see how it's gonna overhang gonna shed the snow easily nothing's really gonna sit on there it's gonna probably put the snow by the time it falls off there probably somewhere out here i think that's probably gonna be the ticket i'm gonna cut those then and i'm gonna cut the pieces to come off the back we'll get them installed and then i'm gonna put a few sheets of steel up because i know rain's yonder does that mean coming i don't know i like to say it though it's yonder let's get back to work You guys can also run a string line here. I don't know if you've done this before. You start at the far end, put one of these boards, and then you put another one right here, and then you run a string line, and then you just butt these up to it. I just didn't have a string line handy, and I didn't want to get that rigged up. It's not overly important. The steel is going to be overhanging a little bit. So anyways, just a tip. Guys hear that sound i don't think that's any good i'm not sure what it is but at least i think we got the pieces cut to the length we need or the the width rather so let's install them and then i'll deal with the sawmill later well now that i'm doing this for the second time as you guys just saw i figured might as well go get the string line so that's what we're doing i put one up at that end put a board up at this end and we'll run the string line down and then it'll be nice and straight and I'll try to forget all about this. Let's, uh, let's just wrap that up like so. How tight is this gonna go? You guys think we're gonna be able to do this without, uh, without another mix up? I don't know. No, well, we're starting off good, hopefully, with the string line. Okay, there we go. Now we got something to go off of. This is usually where I snag my pouch on it and break the string. Let's see if that happens, right? Let's hope not. Be positive, be positive.
All right, guys, we made it. Have a little look see here. As you can tell, I just have one piece left right where my ladder is. That is obviously not a full piece of metal, so I got to go up to the shop, cut that down to size. But besides that, we got everything else up there. And this is a really big milestone. As many of you know, snow is just around the corner for me here in central Ontario. And so with that up, I can sort of breathe easy a little bit. Not too easy. I'm kind of panting here. I'm kind of uh, kind of worked up. That's a bit of a stressful endeavor for me. I don't know if you guys know this. You probably don't, but I don't like heights at all. I got the harness on, but to be honest with you, I don't really like trusting material that is supposed to save my life. So I'm up there, I'm slugging away, and I'm definitely stressing out. But we got it done. We got a roof up there, and I think it looks pretty good. Overall, I think things are just about going to get wrapped up here for that back side of the roof. We got a nice overhang there and we got a nice overhang at the back and one way to tell a quality roof job is you head down the end and you look to see if everything looks fairly straight and i'd say we're pretty good it overhangs slightly more at the far end a little less here you might not be able to tell but i can and looking here this looks really really good so everything was square and that was the main thing you guys saw me talking earlier uh, when I was uh, framing this, of the importance of things being plumb and square and level. Well, this is the opportunity for you to see if this building was not square. When you do stuff like, like roofing, you would definitely notice. And honestly, it's a sign of a rookie. Now, I'm not going to toot my own, my own horn here. I've done things like this before. I'm probably still learning, but uh, I don't like to make mistakes like that. It makes me seem like I have no clue what I'm doing when I have just a little bit. Anyways, I think we're doing pretty good here. I think we've turned the page. It was a, well, it was a pretty big job getting the roof on. I'd say it was a lot harder than putting the base down, even the posts up. I'd say getting that beam up, getting the rafters up, strapping and roofing, that was probably the hardest thing thus far. Now, one of the challenges I've got going on here is the fact that this tin, the steel roofing, has been reused, and hence there's holes in it. The holes didn't line up perfectly on the old sawmill shack to the new one, and so I got to go up there with some silicone or roof goop or something and fill in the screw holes that are still shining light through. And you know what? Just head into your shack on a sunny day and you guys might not be able to tell, but I can see the holes already and it's not even that bright out. Have a look up there. You guys see any of the holes? I sure do. Oh gee, there's, oh boy, there's probably a good, oh, I probably just saw a good 10 holes there. So I'm going to be pounding on the goop there and uh, making this thing uh, watertight. I'm not too concerned if it drips a little bit. I'm out in the bush. This is a bush shelter, more or less. I'm not too concerned. If this was a fine home, then obviously I would be. Looking at the back here, I think it looks pretty good. If you have a look-see, it's nice and flat. Everything looks square. And that is certainly, at a 612 pitch, gonna shed the snow. So I got a few other ideas twirling around up in my head that I gotta iron out and get onto paper, or at least theoretical paper. I don't put much on paper. What that is, it is collecting water. You guys can see the slope on this. Before on my old sawmill shack, I had eaves troughs along the back and that funneled water into the big blue barrels. And then I used that water with a little drill pump to fill up my lubrication tank on my mill. I don't know if I'm gonna do that again because my big concern is if I slap an eaves trough onto the back of that roof, this is gonna let a snow load go. Once the snow gets big enough, it's gonna shoot off there like a rocket. And in my experience, if you've got the ease troughs there, they tend to go shooting off with it. If you guys have an idea as to how I can collect water, whether it's using the eaves trough or something else, please let me know because I don't want to cart water back and forth from my house out here. One other thing I'm going to tell you guys about before I head out here. Up at the front, up at the front, I need to finish the roof. Now, as you can see, this is a fairly tall, fairly tall uh, distance here. It's pretty high. If I get some driving rain or snow, it's gonna blow right in there and get all over me. What I need to do is come up with some sort of roof coming off the front. And I sort of alluded to this already that I was gonna use some framing material and frame a roof section that comes off probably four or five feet and then ties in back to the rafters. I think that's what I gotta get, uh, get going on because as it stands now, yes, it's rain tight, yes, it's snow tight, but when we get those big storms, inevitably it will still blow in there a bit. So tune in next time, I'm sure to be framing up that front roof section. And I also need to button up a few other loose ends, like finish off the bracing. And I also want to think about log bunks. I have nothing currently for logs to sit on. 
I like to have log bunks that are high enough for the logs to roll in nicely onto the mill. I got to get that figured out and maybe I'll think about putting some siding on some of this. I don't know. Still sort of in that planning stage and for this project, I'm sort of learning as I go and sort of planning as I go. Anyways, that's it for me today. I'm going to head on in, grab a coffee, probably have some dinner. I'm pretty pooched. Guys, I appreciate you being here. If you're brand new, welcome aboard. Check out the playlist for this build. If you're not brand new, thanks for being here. And everyone, come on back next time. Mm -hmm.